Hello everyone. In this video, you'll see how to perform basic copy cataloging tasks in WorldShare Record Manager Fundamentals. We'll briefly cover how to search WorldCat for a record, how to edit, add, and delete fields, how to access Mark Field Help, how to reformat and validate a record, how to set your holdings on a record, and finally, how to export the record to your local system. After logging into WorldShare, select Metadata, and then select Record Manager Fundamentals. I'm going to do a search in the basic search area over here on the left. But note there is also an advanced search, which would allow you to search in up to five indexes at a time and apply qualifiers or limits before you execute the search. So I'm just going to do a search with the data type bibliographic records. I'll leave my scope set to all WorldCat. And then I'm going to change my index to the ISBN index. And let's say I am looking for a record for a specific edition of James Joyce's Ulysses. And I do have an ISBN. And if you have a number search, it's always a good idea to start out with that. So you can type or scan the ISBN in the terms box below, and then either hit enter on your keyboard or just click on search. And my search has resulted in 10 records. Now I can toggle between the enhanced view, which you're seeing now, and what we call the condensed search results by clicking that link, condensed search results at the top here. And then you can see the results list in a column display. And I can go back to the enhanced view by clicking enhanced search results at the top again. I can limit my search by the language of cataloging using the facets over on the left. So I'm going to select English. And let's say I'm also looking for a print book. So under format, I'm going to apply print book. And now I can see I just have four records. If I want to compare two of the records in my results list, what I can do is copy the OCLC number for one of the records. I'll copy the number here for the second by using Control C on my keyboard. And then I'm going to click on the title for the first record to open up the full bibliographic record. And here it is. This is the DLC record. To compare this to the second record that I had, I can go to the record menu and then select compare. And then when the compare bibliographic records box opens, I'm going to paste that OCLC number in the text box there and click on compare. And now scrolling down, I can see the records side by side. To select or to go back to the DLC record, what we call the current record, I can just click on the OCLC number. Or if I wanted to select the other record that I've compared, I could click that. If I want to compare an additional record, I can click on Select New Compared Record. The first record would stay there, and the compared record would be switched to whatever I search for here. I'm going to just go back to the DLC record by clicking the OCLC number. Scrolling down in this record, you can see that there is a blank 092 field. This would be for a local Dewey number if I wanted to enter one here, since my library is profiled for Dewey. So what I might do is copy the Dewey number here from the 082. And then in the 092, I'm going to go ahead and paste that in there. If you want to make a slight change, though, you can do that. Let's say I'll take that off. We're just going to leave it at the 823.912. Since my library is profiled for Dewey, I can now go to the Edit menu and select Apply Dewey Cutter. And I have four figure there. This is an option that I chose in my user preferences. If you wanted to change that to Sanborn, you could just do that in your user preferences. I'm going to go ahead and click on Apply Dewey Cutter. And you can see now that the system has generated subfield B, a cutter there for my call number. Scrolling down in my record, Let's say that I want to enter a 504 field. I'm going to click on the green circle here to add a row. And then I can just simply type in here 504 and tab over and enter the text. If I wanted to get Mark Field Help for any of the variable fields, I can just click in the field, then right click and select Field Help, and then Mark Field Help, and in a moment, Bibliographic Formats and Standards opens in a new window with Mark Field Help for that 504. You can just close out that window when you're finished reviewing it. 
If I wanted to get mark field help for the fixed field elements, I'm scrolling back up to the top, you can see the leader and the 008. You would click them to expand them. And then to get mark field help, you would click the question mark, for example, on the encoding level. And again, mark field help will open to bib formats and standards for help with the encoding level. And I can just click cancel to close that. And here's the 008, we can also expand that. So let's say I also wanna get mark field help for nature of contents code. I'm gonna click the question mark. And again, I'm in bib formats and standards, and I'm gonna scroll to just review the codes and their meanings and so on. So let's say that the item that I have does have bibliographies and I don't see that code in the record, which would be a B. So I'm gonna close bib formats and standards and I'll just enter a B here. Now you can see most of the values here are in drop downs, but some of them are just a blank text area for you to type in. And since I made a change, I would have to click on done to save that. Scrolling down now, I can see that I have some Library of Congress subject headings here. Let's say I want to enter another subject heading. I can scroll down and let's say I'm just gonna enter it at the bottom because I want to show you what something called reformat does. So we're simply gonna type in here 650 and I'm just gonna use my mouse or you can tab over to the second indicator and then I'll type in here the subject heading that I'm going to add. And then I click outside of the box and it recognizes that dollar for the delimiter symbol and the V as a subfield. So before I do a reformat, just a little bit about what exactly reformat does. It's going to look at the 006 through the 300 fields and sort by all three characters of the tag. And then for the 400s through the 900s, it would sort by tag group, but within the group, the input order would be preserved. 029 is always going to be at the bottom. 049 is always going to be the last 0xx field. Now the record would automatically reformat when you validate or replace it. So you can also do this manual validate at any point though. So to reformat the record, I go to the record menu and then I'll select reformat. And the system responds reformatted the record. And if I scrolled up, to the subject headings tag group, the Library of Congress headings. You can see that the one I added has moved up to the bottom of the tag group, the 650 second indicator zeros. We also have the option to do a manual validate. Validate is gonna check the validity of tags, indicators, and subfield codes. It's going to verify all required fields are present, that non-repeatable fields occur only once, and it's gonna check the structure of some fields such as the O20 and relationships between some of the elements. So to validate my record, again, I would go to the record menu and then just click on validate. And the system responds unable to validate the record, fix one error and try again. So if I scroll up a little bit or down the record, I should see the error in red text and here it is. So in the 300 field, there is a subfield Q, which is incorrect. So I'm gonna change this to correct it to a C, and then I'm going to validate again. So we'll select the record menu and validate. And now the system confirms that it has validated the record. Next, you'll want to set your holdings on records that you own or have access to. When you set a WorldCat holding on a Mark 21 bibliographic record in WorldCat, you are adding your library's OCLC symbol to a bibliographic record and specifying that you own an item that's represented by that record. And after setting the WorldCat holding, other users can see on WorldCat that the item is in your collection or you have access to it. In Record Manager Fundamentals, you can go to the record menu and then select Set WorldCat Holding. Optionally, you can also select set holding and export if you want to do both of those actions at the same time. So for now, I'm just going to set my holdings on this record. So I'm gonna select the record menu and then click on set WorldCat holding. 
and the system response that the world cat holding and you can now see it does say my library held with a check mark and a green circle there if you no longer owned or had access to the item so at some point in the future you would come back to the record menu for this record and then you would select delete world cat holding optionally you can use the save in progress file in record manager fundamentals it is an online save file and it is for your institution, which means that anyone with a login for your institution would be using the same online save file. And you can view the records in the save file in connection or record manager. So when you're viewing a record, if you go to the save menu, you will see the option to save in progress record. So I'll save my Ulysses record by going to the save menu and then I'll select save in progress record. You have the option to add my status, maybe your name or your initials. And this might be a good idea if you have multiple staff contributing to the same save file so that you can retrieve just your records by filtering by my status. So I'll click on save. And the system confirms it has saved the record as saved in progress record 11. If I wanted to retrieve the save file records that I have, I would just go over to the left and change the scope from all WorldCat to save in progress. And then the indexes here are available. I can see all of my save file records by entering an asterisk and then clicking on search. Or if I want to see just the records that I have saved, I can put in my initials, which I've used, and then select for the index my status. When you export a bibliographic record, you can use TCP IP to export a record to your local system, or you can export to a location on your computer or network and then import it into your ILS. Before you export a record using TCP IP, you must set this up in your export preferences. When you're ready to export a record, you can export it from the save file or just from the record that you've retrieved from WorldCat. So I would go to the record menu, and then select send to, and then there's the option. You can send it to an export list or to your local system via TCP IP if your system's capable of that. So I'm just gonna select export list. I can select one of my existing lists here, or I can create a new list. So I'm gonna create a new list. I have to give it a name. I'll call this October 23. You have the option to make this list your default and it would just appear at the top of the list. You could just add to the default a little more quickly. You also have the option to select my list. If you do that, others with logins for your institution do not have access to that export list. If you leave it unchecked, then others with logins for your institution would be able to do and export records in that list. So I'm gonna click on create and add to list. And the system says added the record to the bibliographic record export list October 23. Now I can go directly to my list by clicking on the link here, October 23. If I come back later and want to go to my list, I can click on export lists over on the left. And here are the three lists that I have. I can click on the name of the list. Here's the one I just created. And it's reminding me this export list is shared across your institution. That is because, as I said, I didn't select my list. To export the list, I'm just going to go to the export drop down here. And you can see, again, I have the option to send directly to my computer or to send directly to my local system via TCP IP. If I wanted to delete any records in my list, I would check them here and then I would click on delete but I'm gonna send just this one record. So I'll click on export and then I'm gonna select send to my computer. And I can see my export list up there at the top of the screen. So I would take my list and save it locally. And later I would upload it into my local system. If you have questions, please visit help.oclc.org for documentation, training and conduct information for OCLC support in your region.